had a particularly vibrant scene, um, and it looks like we are actually going to be getting into uh, Moki IBW versus Panda and Crudo here. Uh, Moki IBW, the green team. Moki with a don't, or IBW, excuse me, with a don't ban me tag. Moki with a Moki tag. Yeah, very nice inside joke there. Oh, the Firefox recovery too. What a great recovery option there. And they were able to save each other as a result too. Green team to an early lead. Yeah, and the Blue Fox throwing away his stock a moment ago. Uh, that was Panda, and we got some slight technical issues here. Um, I know we were having uh, some issues with Slippy a moment ago as well, but hopefully we'll get those sorted out before long. To, to finish that thought I was mentioning a moment ago, though, Nathan, um, just in Ohio, and particularly in Columbus and OSU Melee, the, the region that I'm from, we had like a particularly unusually vibrant doubles scene. We had a weekly yeah. double. Um, and it's it's fostered a lot of particularly good doubles players in my region. Um, I was able to get carried by Zealot, a really, really good player who lives in Colorado but mm -hmm. goes to school in Ohio, uh, to ninth at uh, the Big House 9. Like, what, what the heck? Like, that shouldn't happen. I'm not that good. But then you look at losers of this bracket. You look at Spy and Holiday, two more players from Ohio, and uh, they're making a run for top eight as well, possibly. They'll be playing a little bit later on. And uh, here we go. Looks like we're doing some ping testing between these players at this time. And you gotta just hope that we can get a decent enough connection to get into the game. Open. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's just like the issue when it comes to doubles sometimes too, is that you have to take into account the the amount of different pings, uh, pings that people have. Also, just like what location people are from. Um, there's just so many different factors and also like slippy broadcast. I mean, there's a bunch of just variables that can happen. As folks would say, they call it the D word as Billet once coined it. You know, there could always be a, a ton of desyncs that happen. You know, just there's a lot of variables. So, I mean, that's just kind of the risk you get sometimes with running doubles. But, you know, doubles is such an awesome event. I mean, and we just do it anyway because doubles is just that awesome. Yeah, yeah, the risk is definitely worth the reward. And I know earlier in the in the bracket, uh, in the stream, we were getting some pretty good matches going. So, looks like things are slowly starting to pick up. Um, yeah, you really just got to hope for the best here. But um, since we have a little bit more time, um, losers round six. Yeah. Now, this is going to be two rounds before they would qualify for loser side top four. Um, well, as I said, it looks like we're going to try once more. Yes, maybe. sir. It looks, yeah, it looks like it. Uh, the... Does it, though? Yeah, I guess it kind of does. It like does yeah. and it doesn't look like they're playing, but I think I think they are. Yep, uh, like it'll stutter a little bit, but either way, into the match right now. Kind of a lot of separation early on, gotta say. Yeah, um, I don't think this is actually a match on second thought. I mean, like, when you see, like, one of the Foxes just, like, short hop double laser repeatedly on the top platform. But the, on the other hand, like, a lot of this does look like gameplay, so it's, it's kind of tough to tell. Yeah, most definitely. Well, either way, I mean, who knows, maybe we have to do another choose your own adventure when it comes to it, if we get to a pause state. Yeah, yeah, I, I almost wish that the stream would be going even slower if it's not going to be going smoothly. That way we can do more of like a like a deep analysis of every single decision. And there's just so many decisions to break down in doubles. Yeah, oh, tough break there. And the Blue Fox will SD that is. And it looks like, yeah, they're all white shielding right now. So oh, what good. field trap? <laughs> oh my god, Crudo, that was kind of sick. That was, that was nice. Pretty unfortunate. Um... I don't know exactly what the solution is going to be here. Um, but what I do know is back to losers round six, Spy and Holiday versus Slade and Darktooth. Yeah. Um, we'll have to talk about there. Spy and Holiday, again, from my region. Um, really excited to see them play. Um, but Darktooth, that's a name that you really haven't heard in a while. Can't remember if he was going in the law school or something, but I remember he was good pals with IBDW, probably still is, I believe from New York. And um, I remember he was doing really well. He was kind of on the come up, making a play for top 100. Can't remember if he actually made it. Um, I believe he, he did, was... actually. I believe he did make top 100. So congrats yeah. to Darktooth. And it's nice to see Darktooth back and just playing melee again. Yeah, it's awesome to see. I, I know, I, I just remember seeing some tweet like a year or two ago where he said that due to some sort of like life thing, and we're, I, again, I don't know if it was law school or what, but he was taking a little bit of a step back from playing competitively, but it's always fun to see some of those veterans come back in the fold and just kind of see how they can stack up with the current competition. Um, with, with like in the new like wild west of melee that we live in with Slippy, again you have people like Run Riot and Tempo 
who are doing crazy things in doubles and you have people like Ben who are doing insane things in singles. Aklo also comes to mind, of course. And shout outs to Aklo um, and Ellis uh, for making Summit. Uh, congratulations to them. Super happy for them both. Yeah, it's nice to see just a bunch of new faces too, getting their opportunity. Just, just to show what they do in the spotlight. I mean, you know, you can have, you could say the guard is changing a little bit as well with a lot of people like th them on the come up. And I think the online age has kind of paved the way for some of these people. You know, I think it's allowed people to have more opportunities to gather more resources for some of the work uh, for them to improve at the game. And also just a network too, not just for players. I mean, also like TOs and commentators as well. So I think it's really neat to see they have uh, Aklo and LLC there. And I think it's healthy for Melee as a whole. I mean, you look at it, I mean, we were just talking about in teams, do you have Temple and Run Riot? I guarantee you before quarantine and before rollback, probably barely some people have heard about. They're probably just a rumor. So it's nice and refreshing to see what kind of an impact they've had on the community and also what they can do going forward. Yeah, man, and I, I love everything you said. And speaking of impact, man, when you think of like the most impactful individuals in the Melee scene in its history, like 10 years from now, to me, it's going to be really hard to look back and not put Fizzy in the top two. I think even now he's probably top two most influential. Um, even in the short period of time that we've had uh, Slippy live, it's it's just really changed the way that we play the game. It saved this game um, from, you know, what, what could have been because of the pandemic and everything. And um, it, it's kind of wild that we live in a world where Melee Online is is better and it's just a better overall experience than playing Ultimate. And, and honestly, for the Ultimate community, I wish that they had something like this. But looking back, I mean, you, you think of Samox and you you think of people like the Crimson Blur and also Waff, shout outs to Waff directing this. But man, Fizzy, like biggest of shout outs. And uh, I can't wait for Ranked, man. Like he's not even done. He's not even done impact in the community. What a guy. You're it's like, you're telling me, wait, this is just the beginning for Fizzy. Oh my goodness. It's like, what more can Fizzy already offer than he already has? It's like, I mean, it's like if you were to have like a community member Hall of Fame, uh, Fizzy's probably one of the first people that comes to mind on the list. Because oh, he, he's first he, ballot, easy. Yeah, he, he effectively changed Melee as a whole. And it looks like we're going to be changing Melee here with this game. It looks like we're underway now. So true. This will be a part of Melee history. And according to Smash GG, one game, and I don't know if this is accurate, but on Smash G, one game has been reported. And currently, it would appear as though Panda and Crudo are up 1-0 over Moki in IBDW. Yeah, most definitely. And it looks like both Moki and IBDW are off stage right now. I guess we can do our choose your own adventure thing right now, <laughs> too. Uh, unfortunately, they can't see it. But I mean, you know, both uh, Moki and IBDW were off stage and they were trying to recover back. And you were wondering that is IBDW going to stall and try to wait for Moki to recover into him so they can get right, him to right. life? Or. Are they gonna just try to fend for themselves? I think it's a good question to bring up. I really wanted to see like a Leffen Ice esque situation where they upbeat into each other to try to send themselves both higher into the sky and then kind of reset their options from there. Uh, I think that it's always cool doing something like that when you're not like actually sitting next to your teammate and you might not have the same kind of chemistry for that reason. Um, it definitely takes a, a lot more guts, but. Looks like we'll never know what would have happened. We're going to try one more time here in game two. Um, and, well, there it is. We do have a little bit of time, though, to talk a little bit about some of our sponsors for this yeah. event, Nathan. And I want to just quickly shout out Beast Coast for being one of the sponsors to, to help make the big one possible. And, and also just empowering people in our community like Woff, uh, like Magi, uh, to keep doing what, what they're doing to support uh, the community and, and just continue to do the things that they love. Um, you know, I, I think that the community is, is honestly blessed to have organizations like them willing to invest and uh, and just just keep melee alive. So, I guess a shout out to Beast Coast. Beast Coast. I mean, what more can you say? I mean, they have been phenomenal with us too. I think another another one too is Golden Guardians as well. Uh, part of this event too. They are sponsoring. I mean, they got us on Chase Center, which is absolutely surreal. I don't think anyone would have expected that we'd be advertised on Chase Center. Um, just they've been amazing to the scene too. They're helping out with other stuff as well um, when it com when it comes to the community. Um, we also have Red Bull. Red Bull gives you wings. Um, they are also a great part of the scene. They've been around for a while. Zets, I see you got the Red Bull there. Go and get some 
Go and get some wings yourself, my guy. I totally, totally can relate to you there. Um, you can also hitbox. More ways to play melee. I love hitbox too. I mean, you got so many different ways to play melee now, whether it's a controller, a keyboard, and now you got hitbox. So, I mean, there's so many other neat ways to play. Dude, like, that moment where I saw that tweet of Toph just in front of the, the freaking Golden State Warrior Stadium with with the Golden Guardians players on that, that screen. Um, like, all-time surreal moments in, in Melee history, you know? Like, you think about, like, oh, like, when we when we got Melee back in EVO in 2013, when we won that that fundraiser, um, you know, you think about when, like, like Ken and when Korean DJ got picked up by Liquid in, like, 2014. Yeah. And that was like, oh my god, it's happening. And there's been a lot of moments, but, like, seeing that, seeing that picture of Toph in front of that stadium, um, that was like a real, oh my god, this is happening. Oh my god, Melee has really made it moments and man <laughs> golden guardians like they also their content is incredible just the, the the quickness with which they have been influencing the scene and providing amazing content has been really impressive and uh just excited so we're, we're just a really really blessed community and thanks to everybody who makes things like this happen yeah i mean we truly are blessed and we're gonna be blessed with this melee right now oh wow what an up smash too by moki oh and another up smash and another there's up. another one yep and, we and... Have a score update from uh, Brandon himself saying that it is 1-1 one, one in the set right now, so they Moki and IBDW did even enough. Curious to yep. see what adjustments they made. Oh, that looked like a weird like little lag spike stopping Moki from getting the double jump before his side be a little unfortunate. Moki trying to wait and find an opportunity. Has a knockdown on the blue fox. Yeah, let's see. Going for the edge guard right now is IBDW, but he fumbles the bag just a little bit too. Got a lot of separation going on. Oh, he couldn't hit the edge guard on the other side, but picks up on the right side by hard calling out the up B really far off stage. Uh, I, I like that from him. And green team with a lot of momentum, having taken the last game. And now they're up, like, what, almost three to total stocks. Yeah. I think another thing, too, is Cody, IBDW, is stock tanking. Good. He's at 140 right now, while Moki is still on his third stock. That's the stock well up too, because, I mean, if you have someone that's a dedicated stock tank, you know, that makes it a lot easier to really, like, shift your focus. Yeah, and man, I mean, that's just Fox, uh, like, double Fox in doubles. They can be the best team, and they can also feel so volatile. Like, they can die at, at a moment's notice. It's it's Fox. But if you can't get those kills, and they're the ones getting their openings and, and getting their huge combos, edge guarding always seems like they're recovering. Um, it really, honestly, I think it's going to come down to to what extent can the blue team blow up the Foxes and kill them at lower percents, find Gimps, and force 2v1s while they just got a Gimp on the one player. Um, of course, yeah. Crudo in a really tough spot now, and there's really no world where this should be too difficult for the green team to close this one out. Yeah, especially you got five one lead right now, and yeah, that's it too. That's a pretty, that's a pretty thorough game. And like you said, I mean, it's a volatile team. I mean, you know, Double Fox, they can just run teams over sometimes because I mean, Fox is incredibly, and I mean, incredibly good character too, especially in doubles because it seems like he can do it all. You know, he can get people, he can tank. You know, there's a lot of he's got a lot of versatility. And I think I was put on full display in that game three. True. Uh, I, I think sometimes Double Fox can almost feel like playing Falco in singles in terms of like the glass can in this. Yeah. Um, and I think that truly good Double Fox teams need to play really good teams play. They need to stay very close together and be ready to support one another on a moment's notice. The moment your Fox gets grabbed and thrown off stage, you can't be too far away or else you're you're already too late to help. So making sure that you don't get too wrapped up in your own 1v1 on the other side of the stage and remembering it's a team's game. That's really like the first initial hump that a lot of players need to kind of learn in doubles is thinking about the game in terms of its teams. Oh, and Slippy is... Uh, Rolling back quite a bit now. We saw this in the, the last commentary block as well. Nice Armada Shine there. Oh man, and uh, Moki or IBW, tough to tell which was which there. So close to getting a second kill on the Sheik. Yeah, they're gonna fall down too. It looks like they do get a safe one, but you're definitely right. You know, the old oh saying my. is that Falco spawns at death percent. Oh my goodness, too. In this case, it's Bruto spawning at death percent right now. Getting shine right down to the bottom of Yoshi's story. The green team collectively has taken like 45% while taking three stocks and counting. Um, this is a insane display. And finally, uh, Panda is able to get a shine off stage to try to stop the bleeding. Yeah, I'm looking at IBDO going for an edge guard right now. He gets knocked back to center too. 
Small slippy bugs going on right now, but we can definitely get an idea of what's going on in the matches. Moki does lose his stock right now. <laughs> really nice awareness from Moki to get a back air after a, a launcher from IBDW. And he tried to shine. cover Randall. That's a huge shine too. Knock down Fudo. Oh my gosh, we got another little skip there and a rollback stuff. Oh, on the slippy broadcast. Oh my gosh, Slippy not being kind to us today, but the green team is definitely being kind kind to us right now, taking these stocks right and left. Yeah, and it just, I, I don't even know um, if this is the stage for them. They're trying to kind of keep it close quarters, but the green team seems to be thriving just as much as ever. Um, and wow, does Panda need to somehow hit this edge guard along with Crudo? They will do so. I'm surprised that uh, that IBW didn't try maybe a down tilt or something as a safe way to try to launch Moki up and save him there. But here we are with a two stock lead, blue team down to their last stocks of winner's bracket. Yeah, most and definitely. I think <laughs> that's all that's going on. I was going to say, yeah, too. We got lots of warping going on right now but and you're definitely right it looks like the scrapping game too of going of going to story it seems like that ibbw and moki are more comfortable scrapping it out they do get an up smash too so this could be an opening what an onset game. tech oh crudo you have to live this and he's okay for now and moki taking his good old time gets up smashed by ibdw and we're all down to last stocks Panda barely lives that and is able to side be back to the stage. Crudo is now in between two foxes, narrows his way out. Panda again having to recover goes high, and he's fine. He somehow finds the ledge. This is such a close situation, Nathan. Yeah, they're all very tight right now. Well, everyone at pretty high percent except Moki too. There go, there goes Crudo right now. Oh, he takes that back air. He can't get close enough to the stage to tech it, and that will be the set three one. So close, and Panda nearly claws that one back to put himself in a position to try to force a game five can't quite do it and green team holds on but man did the blue team really bring that one back yeah 